हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो आई एम बैक अगेन फॉर द पार्ट थ्री ऑफ दिस वीडियो ऑन चंद्रगुप्त मौर्य एंड इन दिस पार्ट वी वुड लुक एट द कॉन्क्वेस्ट ऑफ नंदा एम्पायर बाय चंद्रगुप्त नाउ फ्रेंड्स इफ यू हैड सीन द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ दिस सेक्शन ऑन चंद्रगुप्त इट हैज इट वॉज मैंशन दैट वन चंद्रगुप्त वॉज एट और नाइन ईयर्स ओल्ड he was playing a game of kingship uh, with his friends uh, at a uh, ground in patliputra and uh, kautilya or chanakya was uh, able to see him uh, there uh, discovered him there and he took him away uh, to takshashila for his higher education and he was given education in vedas upanishads puranas uh, all the shastras and also in military strategy uh, military weapons etc so by 18 or 19 uh, years old chandragupta was uh, the leader of revolution uh, whose objective was to throw off uh, the greeks uh, from india who had conquered uh, northwest regions uh, uh, with uh, uh, when alexander invaded Uh, but uh, by uh, 20 years old uh, possibly chandragupta uh, had managed to throw off these greeks out of the country proper and uh, now the next objective of uh, chanakya and chandragupta specifically was this uh, nanda dynasty and uh, as you would know that uh, chanakya was insulted by the uh, nanda king when he, just before he discovered chandragupta and uh, he made a vow uh, to finish off uh, the nandas for good uh, and he will not tie his hair until uh, that happens uh, so so this uh, was the main objective uh, after the conquest of uh, northwest india for chanakya who has invested who had invested so much uh, on chandragupta and he would not fail in his uh, mission so this was this accomplishment of after the accomplishment of throwing the greeks out of india chandragupta's next staff was to relieve the country of the rule of the corrupt nanda kings now uh, nandas have been called uh, uh, in puranas they have been called adharmiks uh, and in uh, buddhist texts the, uh, the nandas have been called chora pubas which means the decoits of the old uh, so buddhist texts somehow mention that the origin of nandas or mahapadma nanda was actually a decoit uh, rather than a barber he was called a barber in the jain and greek account but in buddhist account he has been called a decoit uh, so and and they used to levy taxes on people on wood skins gum stones etc lose uh, live a live quite frankly a uh, very very luxurious life uh, his wealth was uh, legendary the southern texts talks about his 990 million gold coins and uh, his 80 kotis of wealth 80 kotis one koti is equal to 1 crore or 10 million so uh, and all his uh, this this wealth he had uh, uh, put in a uh, in a rock excavated uh, near the ganges near the patliputra so that's how uh, the southern texts uh, remember uh, dhananda and uh, so so that is how his power was and uh, but the evidences the tangible evidences of uh, chandragupta's uh, conquest of nandas are found only in legends in in uh, literary evidences we may call them in the jain texts uh, such as parishishta parvan by hemachandra who wrote uh, a document uh, this document in about 12th century and then we have texts like melinda panaho uh, or the questions of melinda uh, which uh, are dated to about 1st century bce and then we have buddhist accounts uh, in uh, mahavamsa tika and then we have a play called mudra rakshasam by vishakadatta written any time between Uh, uh mid 6th century to about 8th century ad so uh, but before going into uh, the details of chandragupta's conquest of the nanda empire this is the size of uh, nanda empire now you could look at this uh, right 
uh, from the Bias River or, or just near the Bias River the whole of North India uh, no, or at least most of the North India up till uh, Bengal uh, parts of Central and Western India and also uh, Kalinga or, or uh, modern Odisha and this map has been created uh, as per the information provided by the Puranas who talk about uh, Mahapadma Nanda's conquest of all these areas and uh, the Gumpa inscription of Kharavela of about uh, 2nd century uh, BCE talks about uh, the Nandas uh, having conquered uh, Kalinga so so this map has been created on that and 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 Nandas have been called the first uh, empire builders of this country uh, because before him yes Ajat Shatru was there but his empire would not have such a limit uh, su- such a large extent uh, it was only under Nandas that Magadhan uh, supremacy reached uh, the Punjab uh, the central India of course and the eastern India in whole Bengal including Kalinga and, and parts of western India as well uh, now we have the uh, army of Chandragupta uh, as to what kind of forces he had and Mudra Rakshasam uh, states that Chandragupta's army had uh, Yavanas which are Greeks uh, Kiratas or the mountain highlanders or people living near the Himalayas. Then we have Cambojas, uh, who are the people living in the southern Afghanistan and modern pa- uh, and northern parts of modern Pakistan. Parasikas, which are Iranians. Shakas or Shak and Hunas or Hun. Uh, Hun. Uh, but the problem here is uh, the uh, Shaka Datta mentions Shaka, Shaka and Hoon, Shakas and Hunas. The problem with this statement is that uh, Shak, uh, Shakas or Hans, they came way after Chandragupta. I mean Shakas or Shak, uh, Indos Khitians, they came around 1st century BCE. Uh, and uh, Hans, again, they came around... Uh, 5th century middle of the 5th century AD uh, when uh, Gupta Emperor Skanda Gupta defeated them decisively uh, but even if you remove the mention of Shakas, uh, Shak and Hunas then you have all kinds of people mountain highlanders, Kambojas and, and Greek contingent even and runaway soldiers everyone who could hold a weapon was part of uh, Chandragupta's army and uh, Chandragupta uh, it is also mentioned in Buddhist texts uh, and Jain texts about uh, uh, Chandragupta uh, having made an alliance with a Himalayan chief called Parvataka to supply him uh, with troops now this uh, Parvataka of course as you could uh, see or uh, this uh, Parvataka is a title and not a particular name which means the uh, Parvataka itself means the king of uh, uh, mountain uh, region and uh, there is one interesting observation by F.W. Thomas in his Cambridge History of India volume 1 where he states that this uh, Parvataka was none other than uh, Porus uh, who was defeated by Alexander at Hydaspis river and was uh, Alexander impressed by his bravery gave him much larger area to govern and F.W. Thomas thinks that uh, this is quite pl- plausible that this Parvataka is porous himself uh, considering the fact that what a large space porous had filled in the politics of the country at that time uh, so that no adventurer or adventure of such a magnitude of uh, trying to conquer the Nandas could not have been taken without the help of such a king but uh, this is uh, this is there uh, by uh, F. W. Thomas. But there is also mention of another uh, king named Porus. Now the Greeks cro- call him Porus, but he is a junior Porus, and he was a relative of this senior Porus, whom Alexander uh, gave such a large area to govern, and he was a relative, and he was on hostile terms with uh, senior Porus, uh, and he was ruling an area near the modern Chenab River. 
and alexander uh, invaded his kingdom but uh, this guy ran away uh, towards magda leaving his country and his uh, people uh, could this be possible that this parvataka what we are talking about is the parvataka not the senior porus but the junior porus because this parvataka as per mudra rakshasam was killed by a vishakanya or a poisoned damsel who was out to kill chandragupta but accidentally she killed this parvataka uh, because greek accounts on the other, other hand say that uh, porus or the what senior porus he was killed uh, he was assassinated by alexander's general called eudamus in about 317 bce so it's quite possible that uh, what we are looking at this parvataka uh, must have been uh, the junior porus so uh, this is the uh, now there are lots of strategy story of the strategy of how chandragupta defeated the nandas uh, so they started the invasion of uh, nanda empire by invading the regions on the frontiers and uh, and plundering its villages uh, now friends if you could uh, if you understand india's history of the last 2500 years all the invasion invaders they have come from the mountain passes of uh, khyber and and uh, other regions they have all come from the northwest whether it is uh, the persians alexander uh, the indo scythians uh, kushanas hunas uh, the islamic invasion all these mahmud ghaznavi and ghori and babur nadir shah they have all come from the northwest uh, region particularly uh, uh, near uh, near modern peshawar there is this khyber pass uh, from where these invaders have come so they have all come from the mountain region and up and conquered all all the areas and the plains into from the mountains and into the plains it is only the british uh, and the europeans uh, like portuguese british danes etc who had come particularly the british who had come via sea and then expanded towards the plains and mountains so that was the only exception in indian history otherwise all invasions have come from the northwestern passes uh, so Uh, this is chandragupta actually made a lot of mistakes when he first invaded the nanda empire and there is this famous story uh, where one of his spies actually got refuge in a village and in this in that house uh, he saw that the mother what uh, the mother of the child was uh, telling the boy not to eat a hot dish from the center because the center is hot Uh, and he should start eating a hot dish from the sides which are cooler and and this is a very uh, famous statement by uh, hemachandra and he this is what is written like a child burning his finger when he greedily puts in the middle of a hot dish instead of eating from the sides which is cooler chanakya had been defeated because he had not secured the surrounding country before attacking the capital now if we uh, just see a hot dish and the center the center is patliputra and the edges are the front frontiers so until you do not conquer the frontiers which are a uh, lot cooler in the sense that there would be less soldiers in the center than in the uh, in the in the frontiers than in the center then you go ahead and start attacking and conquering the frontiers and by the time you reach the center it will be lot cooler in the sense that uh, there would not be many soldiers who would be def- uh, defending the capital city so that is how the strategy of uh, chanakya was now uh, what chandragupta used to do is he conquered a city in the frontier Uh, put some soldiers uh, garrisoning troops as garrisoning troops and then went forward uh, the problem was that he was not putting enough soldiers uh, to guard his rear or uh, guard the conquered towns 
because as he went forward the people in his rear the conquered towns would would just uh, kill all his soldiers garrisoning soldiers and cut off his rear that made uh, chandragupta's position quite vulnerable so then a strategy dawned, uh, dawned upon him which is mentioned in the statement and then he uh, stationed enough uh, garrisoned troops in the regions he conquered and then attacked patliputra and uh, deposed the king uh, the jain text uh, says uh, also says that uh, at the very opening of the campaign uh, chanakya and chandragupta suffered a reverse by failing to reduce a town uh this is until uh, chanakya reduced it by a ruse throwing the defenders off their guard and forced nanda king to capitulate with his reduced capacity and prowess uh the jain text clearly mentioned that uh, dhananda was spared and was allowed to leave the capital city of patliputra with his two wives and a daughter and as much luggage he could carry in a single chariot uh the buddhist text of course mention that uh, dhananda was killed but the jain text uh, mention that he was spared and this daughter of uh, dhananda she fell in love with chandragupta as per the jain accounts and was allowed to marry chandragupta uh then uh, we have the buddhist account milind panho which states that 100 koti soldiers 10000 elephants 1 lakh horses and 5000 charioteers were killed in the final battle between chandragupta and dhananda uh, this is a very exaggerated account uh, because 100 koti 1 koti is equal to 1 crore and and this would make uh, whole i am not too sure if the population uh, of our india was that much in about 300 bce so this is a very exaggerated account but it tells you some kind of a battle may have taken place uh, but uh, knowing chanakya he would have tried to create discord among uh, the nanda family itself and quite possibly it may have led to some kind of a civil war in patliputra itself and uh, which made uh, chandragupta's or chanakya chanakya stars easy uh, to conquer nandas so uh, there is another evidence from mudra rakshasam which uh, i mean the play actually starts with uh, chanakya saying that he has already killed the nine nandas or the nava nandas and would not rest rest until the last offshoot of the nanda family is killed ke, uh, is dead so this nine nandas or nava nandas are in indian text whether they are in kashmiri traditions and others and they talk about nine kings of mahapadma nine sons of mahapadma nanda actually ruling one after another uh, they may, this may have been a, some kind of conjoint system of ruling uh, but uh, these nava nandas are mentioned and a senior relative of this uh, nanda family uh, whose name was sarvatha siddhi now he was uh, quite old and when chandragupta's forces besieged patliputra this man could not uh, endure the effects of the siege so he went to a forest but chanakya had none of it because he vowed to kill the last offshoot of the nanda family in his vow and he did this when his uh, when sarvatha siddhi was killed or done to death on the orders of chanakya while he was uh, living a hermit's life uh, in a forest so this is how chandragupta conquered magadha uh, but chandragupta's empire was a little bit bigger than uh, uh, dhananandas because simply because he had also conquered the northwest regions from the greeks and others and he was now quite possibly his empire extended from the indus uh, to bengal uh, and and parts of uh, central india as well uh, so and and this was about 322 or 321 bce and when he was coronated 
there are different dates for example the buddhist uh, text say that chandragupta was coronated 163 years after uh, buddha's death uh, if if uh, buddha was uh, buddha died in about 483 bce then this makes it about 320 bc but buddha's date of death is uh, i mean this is quite subject to lot of debate frankly uh, some texts mention about 487 bce some mention about 460 bce we don't know 485 bce but it is taken now that chandragupta conquered uh, the nandas and became the king of uh, uh magadha uh by about 322 or 321 bce uh so friend this uh, ends uh, this part 3 and uh, we would look at uh, the next part uh, next week we would look at chandragupta's conquest or defeat of seleucus nicator who invaded india in about 305 bce and we would also look at chandragupta's further invasions uh, or further uh, expansion of uh, uh, his his territories uh, his invasion of the south and we would also look at uh, the uh, uh, his his invasion or his his expansion of his kingdom towards the towards modern gujarat and kathiawar uh, and so we will look at all those as- aspects in the next episodes uh you are welcome to have your comments uh, in the comment section uh, and also you can f- uh, contact me on twitter the uh, the mention is there of the of the username you can contact me there for any kind of questions or any kind of comments you have to make and and please follow uh, please like and subscribe this and we will be back next week with uh, chandragupta's uh, defeat of seleucus nicator and his further conquests thank you very much